Hello everybody, I'm Don Counts and welcome to Fayetteville Public Utilities Channel 6 and we're going to talk about the Heart Walk coming up and uh, it's coming up uh, on October the 20th and it's going to be at the Patrick Rehab Wellness Center. It's the 2013 South Central uh, Tennessee Heart Walk and this year it's in memory of Vernon and Mary Catherine Spurlock and in honor of Jimmy Ellis and this man right here, Mr. Bill Stovall. Bill, nice to see you. Well, glad to be here. Really glad to be here. That's good. <laughs> you, you watch Channel 6 a lot and this you're on the other side of that. First time, I think, time. except for when you're doing the host and things like that and some of the car shows. Car show, too, yeah. Right. yeah, so uh, you know we're everywhere and you're everywhere too uh, with the uh, Stovall Body Shop everywhere you turn around your records are everywhere you're at the Christmas Parade that's that's the one place that you shine. We will we try to. Good advertisement. <laughs> it is. <laughs> we like the nighttime parades because oh. we like the lights. Yeah it does look good and uh, you've been doing that for a long time uh, uh, You've got uh, all kinds of records from all different sizes, and and uh, you know you and I have run into each other for years, uh, out and about different places, and and uh, you've been a big part of this community and a good part, and I know it's something you're proud of the community. Oh, I, yeah, I really I love this community. Of course, that's where I spent my whole life, basically. Uh, born in West Tennessee, we lived a couple of years in Huntsville, and then moved to Fayetteville in '55, first day of '55, and been here ever since. Wow. And, I'm to school here, uh, graduated to high school, and, and you know, uh, opened my business up here. My wife's from here, my fam all my family's here. I have a son now in Clarksville, mm -hmm. but uh, we, Fedville's been good to us, and we hope we've been good to Fedville. Well, you have, and one thing about it is uh, uh, when, you, when you think of uh, Bill Stovall, you think of Stovall Body Shop, what got you into the, the body shop business? Well, I, I sometimes think I was born with uh, wheels for feet instead of feet, you know. <laughs> uh, always loved cars, always loved whatever it had to do with cars. Uh, even as a kid, you know, I, I played with model cars, worked on model cars. I always enjoyed taking something apart so I could see how it worked. I didn't always get it put back together, but I uh, just enjoyed that and uh, I went to uh, a uh, couple of years of college at uh, Tennessee Tech and and then I, as I tell people I said then I fell in love got married and then didn't go back to school and I had worked for Robert Richardson at Richardson Body Shop and uh, the opportunity came up that he was going to Lewisburg to run his, his brother's shop and uh, had an opportunity to buy it and uh, my dad and I went to the bank and the bank offered to uh, loan me the money to go back to college <laughs> and graduate college and they said, but we have one question. When you graduate college, what are you going to do? I said, work on cars. <laughs> they said, well, so then they, they loaned me the money uh, to open up my, to buy at Richardson Body Shop. And that was uh, October 1st, 1968. So we'll be starting our 46th year, October 1st of this year. We'll be starting year 46. Where was that body shop at? It was on West Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Dating back to things that people, that was across from what, where Fevel Lumber is now, right uh -huh. there on the corner where Hall Signs is. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, where Fevel Lumber is, of course, that was the Coca Cola plant. Yeah. And, uh, but that's where that's we where, uh, started out, stayed there until 71, and we moved to uh, Nine Milana Road, which is where we've been ever since. I talked to your wife yesterday. You say she's from here. Who was she? Janet, she was Janice Tucker. She was uh, raised on First Avenue. Oh. Of course, avenues were popular for kids uh, back when we were growing up. Was that, that was the baby boomer end of town. I mean, every house had probably at least one kid in it. <laughs> and of course, our house had six kids in it. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I was on Third Avenue. She was on First Avenue. And, and it's, it was a lot just, uh, you know, all our friends was, you know, there, mm -hmm. walked to school, went to Robert E. Lee, you know, and, and mm -hmm. uh, that's just, uh, that was life for us. It's just a small town and, and everybody knew everybody, you know. And if you got in trouble, everybody knew you got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you got married, had some kids. Tell them about your kids. Got two. Got two, two they're not kids. Any, well, they're still <laughs> our kids. Uh, Daryl is the oldest. And he was born in seven, uh, 67. And, uh, and uh, Jeff was born in 71. Uh, okay. Jeff is a minister in Clarksville. Of course, Daryl 
and his family live here. Uh, have two kids, mm -hmm. grown kids, mm -hmm. 15, 16 and 15. And they grow up fast. And grow up fast, and then of course uh, Jeff is uh, married and has two kids, and like I said, they live in Clarksville. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, and, uh, and basically all of my family is, is from around here. Yeah, you know? that's good. Yeah. Well, um, let's talk about the how many employees you've got. You've got a lot, lot of employees, been there well, for a while with you. Yeah, we run uh, we run an average of probably nine or ten employees. Wow. Yeah, at one time we had probably eighteen or nineteen, and and me and the good Lord had a little talk. I said, if you'll get me out of this mess, I won't have that many employees again. <laughs> <laughs> but my employees, and you know, I have to put a plug in for them. Uh, my my employees, the of all of them, have been there over ten years, wow. and, and some of them have been there like even the thirty years. Wow. You know, so. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of them, and, and uh, you know we we know when somebody we know when one walks in the morning if you need to talk to him or not because we know their attitude. And they oh, know yeah. my attitude. That's Don't right. talk to me. I'm not ready yet. You know, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, we understand <laughs> yeah. that. That's the same with me and Gina. <laughs> yeah. She knows. She'll know when it comes in. Yeah, people will say they'll walk in and they'll say to Janice. Is it a good day to talk to Bill? And she said, "No, nah, probably not right now. Let's wait for an hour or two. You know? I said, "Well, it's kind of bad to have have that reputation, but you know, uh, people get to know you and yep. get to know each other. You know." You've seen a lot of things uh, in your business, and and uh, again, knowing how to deal with employees, how to deal with the public, and and we know that's that's a tough thing all the way around for anybody who knows that. But you've seen a lot of things happen here in Fayetteville, Lincoln County, and usually you have uh, been involved or been there. And what's the biggest event that you've had to deal with? Well, you, you know, you start looking back over the years of the things that's happened, and then the first thing you realize is, man, that's history, and. I saw it happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, am I really that old? You know, there's two or three things that come to mind that I, you know, that really impressed me. And of course, one was the flood where the water crossed the Huntsville Highway. You That's know, right. and and we were driving wreckers back and forth across there, and then Avery was driving trucks across, transporting people. And then of course, I remember the square burning. I guess that's the two, yeah, probably the two two biggest things that stick in my mind. Yeah, the main thing there is the reason he, he as you were the only way of getting back and forth across the water. Right, you know, the Averitt, Averitt was using one of their trucks and then we, of course, had the records. They sat real high, you know, and mm -hmm. and then they finally stopped us. Oh. I mean, they, they did finally stop us from... Water got that high. Got that high. Yeah, yeah. that's that's one of the things yeah. that many people might not realize. Right. That was in 90... Right. But it's like 92 or two four or, three, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, somewhere in there. It's yeah. the flood that couldn't happen because... Uh, it couldn't. That flood could never happen mm -hmm. because of uh, Tim's Ford Dam, <laughs> and you know people seem to forget that the man upstairs makes the rules. You know, <laughs> and, right. and he didn't care about the dam. You know, <laughs> that's right. I mean, I've seen lots of floods before the dam was yep. built. You know, because mm -hmm. the, the the south part of the city was always bad to kind of, yeah. you know, get underwater real easy. Right. Seemed like real easy, but mm -hmm. then the Tim's Ford, of course, helped that. But uh, yeah. that uh, that 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 flood was that's one. I hope that is a hundred year flood, and that, if that's the case, you and I won't that's see right. the next one. <laughs> Under a life. Well, we never know. It could no, come you never know. hundred year could be tomorrow. That's right. Uh, so you mentioned the, the the square burning. That was a, a historic event right. for sure. Right. You know, and I think another thing that's kind of historical is I don't know how many cities or towns, but I thought it was kind of uh, unusual that this town had two uh, funeral homes that burned, wow. and that, that you don't. You don't hardly ever hear of that. You well, know. we know of Higgins. Which is the other one? A uh, Gallant. Gallant. This yep, one up here right. burned. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sure I, did. I, didn't remember, I didn't remember that one. Wow, man. Wow. Am I that much older than you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, I think you just let that slip I by. Mean, but, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, of course, the, the Robert E. Lee School being torn down, you know, that was where I went to school. You know, mm -hmm. you, you remember, mm -hmm. you know, lots of memories there. Uh, yeah. uh, Padlins. And, uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, those things you do remember. You do remember that. That's for <laughs> I sure. I don't know if they know anything about paddlings today in school, but we did then. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, like the uh, uh, Huntsville Highway w was just a highway, wow. you know, uh, two-lane road. Was it two-lane when you when you went into business? It was two. Uh, when I went in business. On the line of road? You know, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. remember for sure. I, I, I can remember when we just had the first bypass built, you know, mm -hmm. we just had one one side of the bypass oh, yeah. and then got the other other side. And the old bridge, you know, with the 
the river bridge, it's the four lane bridge, mm -hmm. or actually five lanes, we turn lane, but yeah. you remember the old, the old steel bridge, just like the one they just tore down at Kelso a oh, few yeah. years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and the and of course the old stone bridge, a lot yeah, of people I, viewing or I walked it. across the old stone bridge. Wow. Walked across the old stone. Not supposed to. Mm. <laughs> That's probably why I did it. But you know, <laughs> I matter of fact, I th matter of fact, I, I don't I think I rode a bicycle across it, but mm. you know, you you got you got your buddies that dare you and then of course yep. you, you you do that, you know. Oh yeah. That's a beautiful structure that it's a shame that it that, it, that, that it got down, but but yeah, yeah. I of course I remember that. I remember yeah. the old courthouse. Oh yeah. You know. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, I attend the Common Presbyterian Church, and the church that we first had was right across from uh, the Patrick Doctor's Clinic. Okay. It's, it's a parking lot now. Sure, sure, I didn't and know it, that. Yeah, and of course, they, they tore the courthouse down, and they used, we had already moved to our new church on uh, uh, Lewisburg Highway, mm -hmm. and they used that church for a, uh, for a courthouse. Wow. Yeah, so I got to go to church there, but I also got to go to traffic court there one day, too. So <laughs> I remember. You know, I didn't know that. Well, you no, didn't what know, what yeah. made them do that now during the building? Well, during the, during the demolition and the, the construction of the new courthouse, wow. that church was vacant, and of course they used it for a courthouse. Wow. Yeah. This church he's talking about is the one with the. the yeah, the very steep roof. Very yeah. steep, and it's beautiful. Right. It's a great yeah. structure. Yeah, we, we moved there in. Uh, in Late '68 or uh, late '68 or '69, I forgot which, but yeah, mm -hmm. that was the structure we moved to. Yeah, a lot of history here in Fayetteville Lincoln County, and you've seen it, and and I, it, I'm proud to be a part, a small part of at least remembering a lot of those things. And uh, and you've played a, uh, you, you keep up with what's going on at the county and the city, and and it's good to be in in the know of what's going on to be a part of this community. Yeah, it is, and and. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, y'all really do, I think, a great job because, you know, back when I started in business, and I get some of the old newspapers every now and then, they'll have uh, car ads in there oh, from yeah. Rambo Chevrolet and Roy Warren and, mm -hmm. and Jefferson Ford, you know, and of course, now everything is electronic. You mm -hmm. know, you, you get on Channel 6 to see what's going on. <laughs> and and, and there's, there's so many things that go on in this community that, uh, we just kind of take for granted, yep. you know. I mean, uh, there's lots of local things, that, lots of things going that don't cost you anything to go to. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And one thing about you, uh, you know, you've had to, you've seen a lot of changes, not only in your business, but the technology from no computer to uh, computers, I guess, and ever, everywhere. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, of course, the first estimates that I did were just on uh, uh, paper, you know, they, it was printed out. But you had to write in the part, write in the labor, you wrote in all of that. And uh, one thing that I've done over the years that I am I'm really proud of, and I, I, I guess uh, I have a copy of every estimate that I have written since 1968. Wow. I have every estimate wow. I've ever written since 68. You must have one of those storage buildings full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they're just kind of put around everywhere. But yeah. we, we did pull out the first estimate here about a month ago, uh, uh, we were on, belonged to a uh, national record towing association and everything, and, mm -hmm. and they're going to establish the 500 oldest record companies uh, mm -hmm. in the nation, maybe in the world, in the nation, I know. And, mm -hmm. and of course, we felt sure we qualified for that, but of course, they're not going to just take your word. I don't blame sure, them, but, sure. but I called... Uh, the city, I called Deidre Baker at the city office, and I said, can you pull up and see if you've got a record of when I went in business, and she said, sure, and she pulled it up. And wow. of course, we went in, like I said, October 1st of 68, but we operated as Richardson Body Shop until uh, January 1st of 69. Wow. And it, it showed January 1st of 69, so that's when I told Darrell, I said, go find me an estimate. <laughs> And he, he dug one out. So the city and the county, there's a lot of history, but you've got a lot of historical documents there at your place, too. A lot of history. Well, a lot of just paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how historical, it's historical to me, you know, I don't know. Of course, some of the insurance adjusters get a kick out of it, and we all do when we see how what the price of parts sure. were then versus now and that mm. kind of deal. Yeah. Things are things have definitely yeah, changed. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk about the Heart Walk today, and uh, I know you, it's it's always nice to be honored. Uh, you might mention a little bit about uh, your heart. Well, when we talk, you know, I will. When we talk about changes, is you know, I I'm glad that that there's been changes, and and uh, because I feel like that a lot of those changes benefited my life sure. with the heart problems I had. Well, I know they did, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
I've got a grandfather that died uh, with a heart attack and and uh, you know of course he would still be alive today but but uh, he would have lived longer I feel sure sure had they had the, the things we have of course coming from a heart a heart patient family and uh, Dr. McCauley is my doctor and uh, we even grew up together on the same street so <laughs> sometimes you wonder is that good or is that bad you know I don't know but anyway he uh, early I, I've always gotten a physical I'm real picky about getting physicals even from the time I was probably 25 30 years old and then as I got on up to about 40 45 he and I got concerned about my heart mm. because I'm, a, I'm from a heart patient mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. you know and uh, never did see anything wrong everything was fine you know and it rocked on there and and when I was probably I think it's when I was 50 uh, I was having problems and everything showed up fine no problem you don't have a problem I thought well yeah I got a problem you know and uh, so Dr. McCauley and I agree, said we, we, we need to go a little bit further than what they could do at the doctor's office and uh, and so uh, ended up at uh, St. Thomas and they did some checking and still nothing wrong I said I said, come back six months. I said, no, I'm not going home. So you thought there was a problem? I, was, I, kid, I knew there was a problem. What, well, what, what was the symptoms? Well, I had shortness of breath. You know, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of pain, but I had shortness of breath and just, just you know, just mainly shortness of breath and then and, and some tightness in my chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, we've run every test we can except an arteriogram. And, and I said, well, why haven't we run it? Well, it was uh, a deal with uh, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> and I'm not going to go there. But anyway, this could be a whole other program. You've got to run all these tests. You know, the doctor said we have to run all these tests before we can do this test. And so they ran our arteriogram, and this old body that had nothing wrong with it had to have two stents and a balloon. Wow. You know, so I thought, you know, hey, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So it, it worked out fine. You know, they did that, and then and he said, I came back the next year and. Well, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. I said we'll check you, you know, and and he said, but at the end of four or five years, he said your problem does not show up with EKGs and, and stress tests. He said it just doesn't show up like most people do. But we've got something to go by. Well, five years later, he said it's time. Let's 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 do arteriogram. Well, you know, no problem, except when we did arteriogram, I had two more blockages. Wow. And uh, as a matter of fact, when they did the first blockages, I actually had uh, four more that was just what they call minor, small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always told, I told the doctor, I said, well, that's minor and small to you. It's not your heart. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm concerned. Yeah. Sure. So they, uh, as a matter of fact, they, they, I take that back, they found one blockage. Mm -hmm. And so they went in to do arteriogram. And when they did, uh, they went in to do a, a stent, and when he was doing the stent, he said, "Hey, we got another problem here. You got another blockage." And I said, "Okay." So we fixed it. Two weeks later, came back, fixed the other one, and then time locked on another four or five years, and uh, and I still got three more for the next five, by the way. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, wow. rocked on there, you know, and and uh, one day after lunch, I was sitting at the office uh, in the office there, you know, and I thought, you know really something's not right hmm. and I just stood up and I told my wife I said Janice we're going to the emergency room now and uh, I can't say enough about the emergency room up here they uh, every time I've ever been there they have been super they have been great you know I mean you can find something wrong with anything sure I mean you can find something wrong with my business I can find something wrong with sure. what you're doing I mean you can find something wrong people aren't perfect mm -hmm. but got up there and, and of course they treated me as a heart patient just as soon as I got there and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and then uh, of course I see Dr. Constantine here in Fedville from mm -hmm. the heart group and mm -hmm. and they said well we're gonna send you on to uh, St. Thomas and sure enough they did and then the uh, uh, next day uh, said well you know you've got four blockages but this time you're not gonna make it with a stent. You, oh. you gotta have bypasses. Wow. So I said, that's what it takes, that's what it takes. So, so they they cut you this time? Oh yeah, they cut you. Oh, all the way. Yeah. Wow. And then, uh, and of course came back and then 
you know, I was recovering just fine. Doing, I mean, I was doing great, and then uh, had another had an attack. I didn't know what it was, and went back to the emergency room, and same good old people, same good old treatment. I mean, they just were great, and uh, they sent they they didn't think I'd had a heart attack, but they sent me on back to St. Thomas. This was three weeks later since I'd had that. Well, it, it had to be a call fighter attack, but but. You know, I got cut again and got it taken out. So wow. I told myself, my chest looks like a <laughs> Alabama road map. You know, I've got marks everywhere. Yeah. But but uh, when you ask about the things that I've seen myself, and and of course I I, I deal with cars and that kind of changes and insurance mm -hmm. companies and all that deal. And and uh, but I've seen a lot of medical changes just just in what, what I know. You know. Uh, uh, I've got an appendix, a, a scar where my appendix was taken out in the third grade. It's it's about this long. <laughs> now you don't even have a scar. Oh, you just yeah. punch a few holes in you and take it out. You know, but, but yeah. I'm glad medicine has advanced like it has because I feel like that's why I'm here today. Well, I think one thing too is you talk about all the things you've been through. Some of the key things is. Of, of acting. You know, some people have a little shortness of breath or some people have, have a little tightness in their chest and not do anything about it, but you was proactive enough to, to right. go to the hospital and get it checked. I, I've, you know, I had rather I, I had rather go to the hospital and then come out and say, well, you were wrong, and somebody said, well, you just go to the hospital too much or the doctor too much, and mm -hmm. maybe be wrong. Is to, sure. Because uh, Dr. McCauley has always said, you know, and, and Dr. Norwood before him was my doctor, and, and he said, if you'll listen to your body, you know, it'll take care of you. Wow. You know, and, and you've got to do that. You that's, know? Some, that's some good advice. You, yeah. I mean, if you're hurting, there's a reason you're hurting, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I feel like I've had three good, three good uh, chances that I got taken care of, mm -hmm. you know, with, with modern medicine. And, and every time the doctor would say, he said, you know, uh, you, you do what you can, and then uh, as medicine progresses, you know, I uh, said, one of these days they may, do, they may be able to do something besides a bypass, you know, something that's like true. that. Well, it's amazing, uh, and that's why that the Heart Association is honoring you for uh, uh, at the Heart Walk coming up on October the 20th, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you there. I'm sure people will hear your story more, and I'm sure if most people see you, they're, you you're usually in an orange shirt. Yeah, my wife wouldn't let me wear it today. <laughs> she said, you go home and put on something besides your orange shirt and a cap. <laughs> I said, well, nobody will know who I am. <laughs> God will have to tell everybody who he's talking to. <laughs> Bill Snowball. Just pretend that's an orange shirt. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. your story. Thank you for your service to our community, and thank you for being around. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're, we're honored that you're going to be here for the Heart Wall. Well, thank you. I, mean, it, I thank the world of the health facilities out there, and I thank the world of Evelyn Lincoln County. Thank you. Well, we're, we're lucky. I, the job y'all do is great. Thank I you. really, you know. Thank uh, you. We got a good community, and we do have a good hospital. And uh, and again, we appreciate everything that you've done for us, and uh, looking forward to many more years of being together. Well, I hope so. That's right. I hope All so. right. All right. Well, uh, don't forget about the Heart Walk coming up on October the twentieth, honoring uh, Bill Stovall here, Jimmy Ellis, and in memory of Vernon and Mary Catherine Spurlock. Thank you for watching here on Fayetteville Public Utilities Channel Six. I'm Don Counts, and we'll see you next time.